everyone, I'm Miss Mia, the Teen Services Librarian at Darien Library, and I'm here to introduce our summer reading book list for middle school readers. But I'm not the only one. I'm joined by our Middlesex Middle School Reading Ambassadors, a selection of 6th and 7th grade students, all of whom read a book off of our list and filmed their own book talks. As we get ready for summer reading, please take a minute to see which books we read, loved, and absolutely recommend that you pick up this summer. To kick it off, our sixth grade reading ambassadors. Hi, I'm Brady, and today I'm going to talk to you about this great book I read called Spies by Mark from Rep. Let's get into it. Spying. It isn't all luxury suits, jumping out of helicopters, and sports cars. Actually, it's better. Secret meetings, double agents, triple agents, and spy planes are the true weapons in the Cold War. Join Mark Favreau on an exciting journey deep into the history of the America versus Russia showdown. You'll meet spies from both sides and hear about their escapades. You'll feel as if you were on a mission too. The Cold War has had its fair share of stolen intel and unmasked secrets, but spies will shine a true light on the secrets of the Cold War with stunning detail. The Cold War has been forgotten and neglected, even though it was so important. If you want to learn more and you're interested in a captivating narrative, Spies is a book for you. Hi, my name is Ellie Eising and I'm here to talk about a book called Born to Fly by Steve Shankin. The year was 1929. Air racing was among America's most popular sports and cross-country races were especially popular. But there had never been a women's air derby. Until now. 20 female pilots from all over the country would come and race in the air derby. Many told them they would fail. Many told them that flying was not for them. It was a sport for men. But these women would prove them wrong. Men crashed their planes all the time, but newspapers said they were brave. When a woman crashed her plane, they were judged and told that flying was unnecessary. Over this course of this nine-day cross-country air derby, there were many injuries, accidents, and even some sabotage. But the best part about the race was the powerful friendships the, mo the women formed with each other. I won't tell you who won in the end, but I will tell you they all felt like winners afterward. Life for a woman was changed forever. There's always been something different about Hannah. Whether it's her heritage, her passions, or her history, she's just always stood out. It's 1880 and 14-year-old Hannah's on the move. Her and her father are leaving LA because her mother has passed and they can't run the dress shop anymore. Hannah had grown up with a sewing needle in hand and is not ready to let go of it. The thing is, her father is not convinced that she and himself can run it by themselves. There's only one teeny tiny major issue. Hannah is half white and half Chinese, and let's just say people weren't quite fond of that back then. Read as Hannah faces the challenges of going to school, making friends, convincing her father, and winning over the townspeople. But Hannah is not ready to give up. Now, I know what you might be wondering. Where can I get this book? And what is it called? Well, I can fix that for you. This historical fiction book is called Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Parker. And you can find it in the library or on Sora. Hi, I'm Joanna, and I read The Blackbird Girls by Anne Blinkman. Here's what it was about. Two girls, seemingly different, but about to learn how similar they really are. One is a bully because of false rumors, and one is bullied for her religion. One with abusive parents, one with kind and caring ones, but both have fathers who were at the power plant when it exploded. After the explosion at Chernobyl, Oksana and Valentina must put aside their differences as they run away from radiation and war. Through fleeting danger, living with each other, and growing on each other, they'll have the craziest eight months of their lives and change forever. This historical fiction book will leave you learning about friendship and acceptance. If you loved Refugee or The War That Saved My Life, this book is for you. Once there was a girl named Nan. She used to be beautiful and had lots of friends. Every then, everything went downhill. You see now who used to be her best friend, Petra, is the pretty and popular one. The reason is because she suddenly became to allergic to everything on Earth. But her friend is allergic to something much more sincere. She's allergic to water. A nail is her life normally besides her allergies. She takes interest in yearbook, and that's how she met Seth and his drugs. 
Seth is an orphan who lives with the aunt house who owns a farm. Seth always wears baggy clothing to conceal the scars on his arms and carries his sketchbook everywhere. One day, three mysterious um, plants come with the rainwater. They take all the farming space and they eat people. Everyone is trying to figure out what is wrong, how the grass grows so fast, and how to get rid of it. Suddenly, all of Nea's allergies and Petra's water allergies no more. But all of the other people on the island suffer. Except for Seth, Anaya, and Petra. They can understand any, everything and everyone else can't. So they must restore their friendship and work together to save their home. People will love sci-fi and adventurous books will love Bloom. It will keep you on the edge of your seat for the whole time and keep you longing for the next book. Thank you for listening. Thank you, 6th grade reading ambassadors. Now, on to the 7th graders. Hello, friends. I'm Nico, and I'm here today to talk to you, well, give you a book talk, on The Bone Houses. It's on my Kindle, but that doesn't really matter. Adrian, Rin for short, is your typical grave digger slash undead skeleton slayer. Living in the small village of Colbrin, she and her two siblings have been barely getting by ever since their parents died. That is, until rich-looking mapmaker Ellis shows up. Ellis is a man with a mysterious past and is hoping to make his fortune by mapping out the mountains at the heart of the dangerous forest, which was once home to the Fae. In this forest live the Bone Houses, merciless walking skeletons that seem to be the creation of an old curse from the Fae. The Bone Houses used to never leave the forest, but recently the evil creatures have been lay laying siege to a small the small village that Rin lives in. Soon, this miraculous duo finds themselves on a quest to stop these bone houses once and for all, and save the village, Rin's family, and for Ellis to ma make his fortune and map the entire thing, of course. Will they ever return? Will Colbrand survive? Will Rin's family pull through? If these questions are to be answered, then you must dive into this bone-chilling tale of love, death, and medieval zombies. The bone houses. Hi! I'm Isabel Lini, and today I will be talking to you about the book Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Park. It's 1880, and Hannah and her father have just arrived in La Porge in Dakota Territory. For months on end, Hannah and her father have been traveling together, trying to find a place to go home, and finally they made it. But Hannah wants this time to be different. Unlike the other kids, Hannah does not attend school and fear what people will think about her since she is half Chinese. Why are your eyes so small? Can you see me? How many fingers am I holding up? Questions like these circulate around Hannah every single day. Despite her differences, Hannah has made the bold choice to finally attend school, facing a world of criticism and hatred. It won't be easy, nor will it be fair, but Hannah has to prove that she belongs. I would recommend this book to anybody who enjoys historical fiction reading. I personally love this book because it is very different from Life in Darien, and teaches valuable life lessons, such as your looks should not define you. It was World War II, and the Germans were bombing England more and more every day. Families sometimes spent days in their bomb shelters, never knowing if their home would survive the night, if they would even make it through the war. Some parents saw that sending children away from Britain would give their children a chance to survive, but they had no idea what dangers their children would face at sea. Despite this, 90 children, their escorts, paying passengers, and crew set off on a journey to North America. Torpedoed, the true story of the World War II sinking of the children's ship by Deborah Helligman explores the little-known journey the passengers took and the tragedy they faced when the ship was torpedoed by German U-boats. This book is perfect for anyone that likes to read. Though the book is non-fiction, the author tells the story in a breathtaking way that will get readers of all kinds to sit down and read. If you're any sort of reader, this book is right for you. My name is Lauren Zhang, and I'll be talking about The Blackbird Girls by Anne Blankman, which is a historical fiction novel set in 1986, and it's about the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. The citizens of Pripyat, Ukraine, have always been assured that an accident at a nuclear power station was a statistical impossibility. But when, on the morning of April 26, 1986, Neighbors and fifth grade nemeses Oskana Sevchenko and Valentina Kaplan rise to an angry red sky. They know that the impossible has happened. The two girls are soon delivered with the news that reactor number four has exploded, killing several workers on the spot and sending countless more to the hospital. 
Nuclear emissions have poisoned the very air they breathe in, and evacuation orders are soon issued by the government. Forced together by the unexpected accident, Oscana and Valentina must look past their hatred for each other and learn how to love and be loved unconditionally. Together, they start a new life in Leningrad with Valentina's estranged grandmother, who harbors a secret that puts them all in danger. Heart-wrenching and engrossing, Anne Blankman weaves together friendship, prejudice, and love into the Blackbird Girls. This captivating, powerful novel is perfect for anybody who enjoys the war that saved my life. Songs from the Deep by Kelly Powell is a thrilling tale of a town torn apart by sirens. The locals of this town, Twill and Guile, are out for blood after the death of a young boy, and they're all absolutely sure that sirens played a part in his murder. All the locals, except for Mora, who has inherited her late father's soft spot for the ruthless beings that lurk beneath the waves. The boy's death seems suspicious to Mora, who has seen a few siren attacks and knows that this wasn't one of them. She reconnects with her childhood friend, Jude, and together they try and find the murderer while protecting the sirens. I really love this book. I did not expect to like it, honestly, um, but the writing was really elegant, and all the characters, whether they were filler characters or just the antagonist, the protagonist, everything was so well thought out. Um, and the plot was just masterful. It was very good. Um, and it does a very nice job of combining fantasy with our world. And it's just effortlessly amazing. I would 10 out of 10 recommend this to anyone who likes mystery fantasy. And there's even a bit of romance for those of you who like that. Nanoral Mozart has always been under pressure, whether it's her father or the royals of Salzburg. All she wants is to be remembered. Then, her brother Warfarl shows his incredible talent. Now, Nanerol is always second. No matter what happens, Nanerol is still super caring and kind to Warfarl, until she composes her own music and it takes her into a magical world. There, she is introduced to a fairy called Hyacinth. He is a lost prince in search of taking his castle back. Then, the person she cares about most, Warfarl, gets sick. She believes it is Hyacinth doing and starts to panic. What is the truth? Not all is as it seems, and is Nanerol willing to give up the person that matters most, just so she will not be forgotten? Read The Kingdom of Back and find out. If you like fantasy and stories of good and evil, this book is for you. The Strange Exit by Parker P.D. House will perfectly immerse you in this futuristic, post-apocalyptic world where Lake, a 17-year-old girl, has awoken in a ship fleeing the deserted... Um, you know, post-apocalyptic, destroyed Earth. And she and her fellow adolescent passengers have all been trapped and locked away in a virtual reality or a simulation. And she pulls back this veil of illusionment um, and discovers that nothing is as it seems. And it's not safeguarding them in that she has to, in order to save them and for them to survive, she must restore the ship by recovering people from the simulation. But will she lose her grasp on reality? Will she keep her sanity? This book is perfect for someone looking for something that warps your sense of reality or dream and fiction and time and space or someone who's a science fiction fanatic, or someone looking for some exciting, interesting, intellectually entertaining book. Jean Ann and her mom live in an RV and are barely getting by. When Jean Ann's mom quits her job, that warning and moves to California searching for a job that's only a possibility, troubles away, which is when Jean Ann's world is turned upside down. At the same time, troubled young boy, Cal, vandalizes his school with a mural. Cal's passion is art and soon that's taken away by the dean of his school. The dean and Cal's mom decide that Cal needs a change of scenery and soon enough he is moving to a different school permanently. When Jean Ann and her mom, mom part at the marina in their RV, she and Cal's story start to overlap. Soon enough, Jean Ann meets the marina beautification committee who wants to kick out all of the people living in RVs. As the struggles of trying to find a job and avoiding the committee become more persistent, Cal and Jean Ann form an unlikely friendship and alliance. You will love this book if you like upbeat fiction, character dribble novels, and an easy breezy read. This is part by Danielle Spetko. 
Thank you so much, seventh graders. Before you go, I have three more books on our list that the reading ambassadors didn't cover. The first is A High Five for Glenn Burke by Phil Bildner. This book has it all. It has baseball, it has heart, it has high fives, and it's a really perfect story about the challenges of being true to yourself when there are a lot of people who are trying to stand in your way. I think it was one of my favorite books on the list this summer, and you should definitely all give it a read. And last but very not least, we have not one, but two graphic novels for you this summer. This first one is called This Was Our Pact by Ryan Andrews, and the second is The Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown. I'll leave it up to you to figure out what they're about. Thank you so much for listening to our summer reading book talks. As you can see, we are very excited for all of our selections. Where can you find them, you may be asking yourself? Well, have no fear. All of these books are available online at darianne.overdrive.com or through the Libby and Sora apps. And if you want a copy that you can keep forever, our friends at Barrett Bookstore will have those available as well. Our summer reading program picks off this year on July 1st, and as always, there will be challenges, events, and prizes for teens. More information is coming soon, so keep an eye on darianlibrary.org backslash summer reading for updates. Be well. Happy reading. Bye.